The Young and the Restless Spoilers Third Ace Full Episodes August 15, 2024 Jack Abbott had always been a man of resilience and determination, but even he could feel the weight of the world pressing down on him lately. The relentless pressures of business, the constant family drama, and the complexities of relationships had left him exhausted. But nothing weighed more heavily on his heart than the sight of his young grandson, Harrison, caught in the crossfire of adult conflicts. The boy, once the center of his parents' world, now seemed adrift, his innocence slowly being chipped away by the realities of a broken home. Seeing Harrison so lost and neglected sparked something in Jack, a deep, protective instinct. He knew that the boy needed more than just material comfort, he needed love, attention, and a sense of normalcy. And so, in a bid to provide some of that, Jack decided to take Harrison to the park. It was a simple gesture, but one that he hoped would bring some joy back into the boy's life. As they strolled through the park, the tension of recent days seemed to melt away. The air was crisp, the sun warm on their faces, and for a little while, it was just the two of them, grandfather and grandson, enjoying the simple pleasures of life. They sat on a bench, looking at pictures on Jack's phone, snapshots of happier times, of family gatherings, and of moments that seemed a world away now. Harrison's laughter was like music to Jack's ears, a sound that made all the struggles worthwhile. But the serenity of the moment was abruptly interrupted when Phyllis Summers appeared seemingly out of nowhere. She was her usual vibrant self, full of energy and affection. The moment she saw Harrison, her face lit up, and she scooped the boy into a warm embrace. Harrison's joy was unmistakable, he adored Phyllis, and it was clear that she adored him right back. Jack, however, couldn't shake a growing sense of unease. While he was happy to see his grandson so full of life, he couldn't ignore the potential complications of the situation. Diane Jenkins, Harrison's grandmother and Jack's current partner, had always been wary of Phyllis. Their history was complicated, full of rivalries and unresolved tensions. The last thing Jack needed was for Diane to stumble upon this scene, Phyllis and Harrison together, laughing and playing in the park. The very thought made him anxious. Maybe we should head back, Jack suggested gently, trying to mask his discomfort. He didn't want to ruin Harrison's fun, but he also didn't want to risk a confrontation that could turn ugly very quickly. Phyllis, however, was in no mood to cut the day short. She was determined to enjoy this rare moment with Harrison, and she saw no reason to leave just because of what Diane might think. Come on, Jack, she said, a playful glint in her eye. It's just a day at the park. Let's not overthink it. But Jack couldn't help but overthink it. The dynamics between Diane and Phyllis were delicate at best, and he knew that any misstep could reignite old animosities. Yet, he also knew that Phyllis wasn't wrong. Harrison deserved these moments of joy, free from the shadows of adult conflicts. Torn between his concerns and his desire to keep the peace, Jack found himself at a loss. Meanwhile, across town, another drama was unfolding. Nikki Newman, Victoria Newman, and Claire had gathered for what was supposed to be a pleasant lunch, a rare opportunity for the three women to catch up and enjoy each other's company. The conversation had been light, filled with laughter and shared memories. But the mood shifted dramatically when Nikki, never one to keep secrets for long, let slip the details of a plan that she and Victor were hatching, a plan to take down Billy Abbott. Victoria's smile faded instantly, replaced by a look of disbelief. Why Billy, she demanded, her voice tinged with a mixture of anger and concern. Hasn't he been through enough? Victoria's relationship with Billy was complex, layered with history and emotion. They had been married once, shared a life together, and while that chapter had long since closed, there was still a part of her that cared deeply for him. She knew better than anyone the struggles Billy was facing, the business failures, the personal demons, the constant battles just to keep his head above water. The idea of her father and stepmother actively working to destroy him seemed cruel, unnecessary, and deeply unsettling. Nikki, sensing the shift in the atmosphere, tried to explain. It's not personal, Victoria. It's business. Victor sees an opportunity, and he's taking it. But Victoria wasn't convinced. To her, this was personal, how could it not be? Billy wasn't just another business rival, he was the father of her children, a man she had once loved. He's already suffering, she said quietly, her tone more pleading than confrontational. Why make it worse? Nikki Newman had always been the matriarch of the Newman family, 
a role that came with its own set of burdens and responsibilities. But lately, those burdens had grown heavier as she found herself caught in the middle of a bitter custody battle that pitted one beloved grandchild against another. Claire, with Nikki's guidance, was fighting to keep custody of Harrison, while Summer, Nikki's granddaughter, was determined to claim the boy as her own. The irony of the situation was not lost on Nikki, she was essentially choosing sides in a conflict that tore at the very fabric of her family. Nikki's intentions were rooted in love and concern for Harrison, a child who had become a symbol of the family's fractured relationships. She saw in Claire a determination to provide Harrison with a stable home, free from the chaos that had surrounded his young life. And yet, every time she offered Claire advice on how to outmaneuver Summer, a pang of guilt gnawed at her. After all, Summer was her flesh and blood too, a granddaughter she loved dearly. The thought of helping Claire defeat Summer in court left Nikki feeling conflicted, weary of the internal strife that seemed to plague the Newman family. The weight of this emotional tug-of-war took its toll on Nikki, who found herself increasingly exhausted by the relentless feuding. The Newman family had always been known for its intense rivalries and power struggles, but this time, the stakes felt different. This wasn't just about business or personal vendettas, this was about the future of a little boy who had already endured more than his fair share of upheaval. Nikki longed for a resolution that didn't involve tearing the family apart, but with each passing day, that hope seemed to slip further out of reach. Victoria Newman, ever the voice of reason, watched the situation unfold with growing concern. She had seen the damage that Kyle Abbott had done to the women in his life, and she feared that Claire was heading down the same destructive path. Victoria's warnings to Claire were consistent and clear, stay away from Kyle. He was trouble, a man who left a trail of broken hearts and shattered lives in his wake. Victoria couldn't understand why Claire would risk everything for someone like Kyle, especially when there was so much more at stake, like the well-being of Harrison. Victoria's frustration with Claire was matched only by her deep-seated concern for her niece. She had watched as Claire became increasingly entangled in the toxic dynamics of the Abbott family, a situation that seemed destined to end in heartache. Victoria wanted nothing more than to protect Claire from the mistakes she herself had made in the past, to steer her away from the inevitable pain that came with loving a man like Kyle. But no matter how much she tried to reason with Claire, the younger woman seemed determined to follow her own path, no matter where it led. Meanwhile, Jack Abbott was grappling with his own set of challenges. The custody battle over Harrison had reached a fever pitch, with emotions running high on all sides. Jack, ever the family man, couldn't stand by and watch as his loved ones tore each other apart over a child who deserved so much better. He gathered Kyle, Summer, and Claire together, issuing a stern warning that they needed to put aside their personal agendas and focus on what truly mattered, Harrison's well-being. Harrison is the priority, Jack insisted, his voice firm but laced with a fatherly concern that was impossible to ignore. Whatever happens between you three, remember that he's the one who stands to lose the most. If you can't resolve this peacefully, then don't drag him into it. He needs stability, love, and a sense of security, not more fighting. Jack's words were meant to be a wake-up call, a reminder that there was more at stake here than just who won or lost in court. But as he looked at Kyle, he couldn't shake the feeling that his son was slipping further and further away from him. Kyle, once so full of life and ambition, seemed to be drowning in despair. The upcoming custody trial loomed over him like a dark cloud, and Jack could see that his son had all but given up. Kyle's energy was at an all-time low, his spirit crushed by the prospect of losing Harrison. He had started to talk more and more about how he didn't see a way forward, how the thought of losing his son was unbearable. Jack was terrified by the direction Kyle's thoughts were heading. The idea that his son might be contemplating something as final as death was almost too much to bear. But Jack wasn't ready to give up on Kyle, not by a long shot. He knew that he needed to find a way to pull his son out of this darkness, to help him see that there was still hope, still a life worth living even if the worst came to pass in court. Jack tried everything he could think of to lift Kyle's spirits, to remind him of the love and support that surrounded him, to encourage him to fight for his future. <laughs>